Hi everyone and welcome booting the Linux kernel. Last time we were able to boot the Linux kernel using the emulator and if everything went well you ended up getting an error. Now I didn't explain what the error means and also I didn't give you the procedure to use to boot the kernel using a physical board even though you should be able to figure it out by yourself because I've already explained everything about the bootloader. Anyway, let's get started. Booting the Linux kernel with the BeagleBone Black. I'm assuming you've already built the U-Boot bootloader and you're willing to use it to boot your system. Let's get started. So, plug the micro SD card with the U-Boot installation into the reader. Plug the card reader to the build PC. Copy the Z image and the device tree blob file to the boot partition on the memory device. Unmount the card reader and plug it into the BeagleBone Black. Start a terminal emulator able to talk to the board. Power on the board and be prepared to press spacebar when new boot messages appear. At this stage, the user should get the U-Boot prompt ready to type the commands shown in the next slide. Now, the first command is going to load the Z-image from the boot partition of MMC and place it into the given starting address. The next line does something similar. Basically, you're just replacing the file name because now you're loading the device tree block file. Next line tells the system to use the first UART device for the console output. And the last line, put the kernel without an in it are the image as the minus symbol is specified. So you're basically skipping the definition of the init RD, so you're just not using it. And this line is going to boot your kernel. If your procedure was correct, you must have ended up with the same error than the emulator's user were getting. Why? Well, the kernel is an executable, therefore it's going to be the same, right? Now, why? User space. If the build of the kernel was successful, why did the bootloader trigger a kernel panic on both selected platform, QEMU and the BeagleBone Black. Well, the kernel needs to mount a root file system executing a program into it in order to transition from kernel initialization to user space. Does the error message make sense now? Well, I hope so, right? The kernel can mount either the real file system on a block device or a RAM disk. The logic for this process is located in the main.c file and it starts with the rest underscore init function. The start underscore kernel function opens the door to the architecture independent section of the kernel startup process. And this is what happens under the hood when the kernel is being loaded. Um, I try to cram as much information as possible, but you don't have to go through all of this. Just want to mention again that the start underscore kernel is totally architecture independent, while the add.o execute code that is bound to specific architecture. And if you like, you can pause the video while I'm going to move next.
If the RAM disk is present, the function kernel underscore init will try to run the program slash init, which will create and initialize the user space. If the previous step fails, the same function will try to mount a file system by calling prepare underscore namespace, which is defined in do underscore mounts dot c. For this step to work, the user has to specify the block device to be used with this syntax. And as you can see, for EMC and SD card, you have to add the P, which I put in red. Last line is an example for SD card, first partition. If this mount succeeds, the system will try to run the following ones in the given order, stopping at the first one that works. The initial command to be executed by the kernel can be changed by using the following boot time parameters. So you're going to be using init. If you want to define the init program to run from a mounted file system. Otherwise, if you're using RAM disk, are the init. Printing kernel messages. Printing messages is always the easiest way to debug software packages. The C function printk does for the kernel what printf does for the user space. These messages, the ones that you can create with the printk function, can be later displayed using the Linux command dmessage. The function printk writes messages on the underscore underscore log underscore buff print buffer. Therefore, all their messages get overwritten once the buffer fills up. The size of this buffer can be changed by modifying config underscore log underscore buff underscore shift usually located in the init slash k config while the amount of bytes read by the message can be changed by using its minus s option. Moreover, the function print k has an optional prefix string that defines the log level of the message being logged. These messages are categorized according to their importance, with 0 being the highest. The next table shows some of these messages. So, as you can see, those are the log levels and the description which is associated. Kernel command line. Passing kernel arguments boot args can be achieved in many different ways. Using the current bootloader option, modifying config underscore cmd line to have these arguments are coded in the kernel, modifying the device tree to hard code any boot args. The following slides show a list of the most commonly used boot args. And you can pause whenever you want, whenever you need. I'm about to move next. And that's the last slide for today.
and um, I hope you've enjoyed my class. Thank you very much.